Hey, it's your pal Mike Squires from the Couch Rest Podcast, episode number 202. 202. My guest, Leif Anderson, formerly the uh, lead guitar player for Vendetta Red, a band from Seattle who had much, much hype and put on a, <laughs> a raucous live performance killer band a bunch of great folks um most of which have either been on the podcast or been in videos um and most recently and you know Leif also I played a lot of gigs with Leif doing the rockaroki thing I think you guys have heard me talk about be, have, having that rockaroki gig um he saw he saw me go through that whole my beard falling out of my face because I was so stressed out it was gnarly trying to learn those songs um, and, uh, most recently he has a podcast, uh, called let's get high and read the Bible, which he created. He sort of co-hosts and sort of like leads, uh, along with our dear mutual friend, Jeff Redding. Um, and they, that's what they do. They get high and they read the Bible and they talk about it. And Leif, uh, details here, if you're unfamiliar with his podcast, he details here sort of his past uh, growing up in a fundamentalist Christian household, being homeschooled, and um, just, uh, yeah, this led him to do this podcast. And it's uh, it's great. I love listening to it. Uh, look forward to Leif uh, singing and playing guitar on an upcoming uh, Couchers video. He's... Liv's got a really cool voice. He's not known for singing, of course. He's known for shredding guitar. Um, but he and his lady Kate have a band called 1111, um, spelled LVN, LVN. And they should have they should have an album ready for early 22. That's that's the word. So um, Leif is a fella who has about as many things going on as I do. We, it's funny when we catch up, we're like, what, how, how many things do you have going on? Well, I have this, 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 and this. One of us is always sort of, it's, you know, motivates the other. It's great. I like having a person like that. Um, so we had a great time. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. It's a little bit longer than some of the others, um, but there's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. So thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Um, this is one of the last episodes for 2021. One of the last. There'll be a couple more, of course, but we're winding down. This is towards the end. So thank you for uh, um, a really great year. Thank you for supporting Couch Riffs on Patreon. It makes this thing possible. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the positive reviews. Thank you for just really everything. Thank you for donating to the Coats for Kids charity. Thank you. Uh, there's another charity video coming up very soon, which you have had to suffer through me not telling you what it is and just telling you that I've been laboring over this thing. And, you know, I have and I haven't. I just have, you know, chasing people down for these things is half the work, honestly. So. That's one vocal away, and I think that vocal is going to be recorded this week, this coming week. I might even go down to New York and actually record this fella singing. So we'll see. We will see. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, thank you to, I want to thank Variety Coffee Roasters, varietycoffeeroasters.com, at Variety Coffee, uh, on, on your all your socials. I drink variety of coffee every single day. That's no bullshit. Um, their website is the only place where you can get a Couch Riffs coffee mug. That's co-branded coffee mug with our old school Couch Riffs logo on it. They're 10 bucks. Or if you buy two bags of coffee, which come in stylish boxes that looks, <laughs> they look like uh, cartons of smokes. Uh you uh, buy two boxes of coffee and add the mug into your shopping cart. Use that code COUCHRIFTS, no spaces or anything. You get that mug for free. What does that mean? That means 10 bucks off. That's a great discount. 
I don't even know what the percentage is. I should work it out and then and then boast about it to you here. But I haven't. I shan't. And I cannot at this moment. Uh, also, while you're over there purchasing your mug, check out their subscription service. It's great. Uh, you can choose to get your coffee weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. They have uh, a few different brew method styles. And... Uh, it's lovely. I would not steer you in any direction, which I would not. In fact, I'm buying a subscription for a good friend of mine for Christmas. That's how much, that's how much I like it. So I don't know. I don't know how much, I don't know how much higher a recommendation you would have than a personal recommendation. So thank you, Variety Coffee Roasters, for being fine, fine partner. That's it for now. We're going to jump into it. Uh, don't forget the golden rule, right? Doesn't doesn't get much more biblical than that, in fact. Um, you know, I paraphrase it, but just treat people the way you want to be treated. Don't be a dick. You do uh, production. Production? <laughs> this is how you do so we're going? production. What what was that? Are you hyperventilating? No, that's a, that's a weave. Oh, good. True to form. This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah. How you, you know, doing, pal? It's good. You know, it's for my cataracts, you know. <laughs> I didn't know you had cats. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you have a dog though. Yeah. Yeah, she's around here. Mila. She's actually I don't think I've ever seen your dog in uh just uh still photos. I don't think I've ever seen a look at this little dog. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty What good kind of that. dog is that? Is she... that a like a Muppet? She <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a Pomeranian Chihuahua. That is amazing. Isn't it cool? Can it looks. See? It doesn't look real. Yeah. She's Remember that movie AI? Uh, with Will Smith. No. I think that's the only AI. How do you make a screen? AI? It was like it had like two false endings, and it had um. Uh, I don't know. There were, but it was a, an atrocity. It was a terrible movie. <laughs> there was a lot of promise, you know. Uh huh. But was there the were, premise? you know, there were like, oh, it was the future, and there was, um, you know, robots that okay. could logic and stuff. Robots um, that eat us. Uh, I wish those are the best movies. <laughs> You know, these ones this is different. It just yeah. sucked. I don't even want to talk about it. Fuck that movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we start the Fuck podcast. Fuck that movie. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> uh, so we have snow on the ground here. How's LA? LA's wet. Really? Yeah, that's why. It's raining like fucking crazy. That's why I'm also. Um, But it's still 68 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it's LA. Um, but yeah, it's raining like crazy right now. And for the last two days, strange. Right. Yeah. How have you enjoyed being a, a Northwest person your whole life and then going to LA? I fucking love it. Yeah. It's crazy. You do. It's crazy. And I think the secret to living in LA is not owning a car. Don't go anywhere. Just do your own thing and enjoy the sights. You know? But when the big one hits, how are you going to drive out of town? Oh, there's plenty of fucking rental car places I could just break in and steal a key. I've got just plans. hop in the back already, of someone's yeah, pickup truck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a good idea. Yeah, you got to find a place that rents out uh, like quads. You know, yeah, four wheelers and stuff. Yeah, because terrain, you know, roads might be blocked, right? So That's it, man. Uh, I've about... seen End Times movies. <laughs> yeah. I uh, see. I know how it's going to go down. End Times movies. It's so funny. That's like a, that was always a big deal in church growing up. Like my mom even used to go on like AM radio and like talk about End Times and stuff like that. when I was. She would kid. speak on the radio over the airwaves about the End Times? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's that? How Lindsay? That guy, when that guy wrote that book? Was there any part of your mom's belief system that, um, which I guess we're just getting right into it, that <laughs> informed her that we were living in the end times? Like this, it 
it was happening or well i mean because with fundamentalists it's always like just around the corner we're well, never there even I mean, though jesus said it jesus who said knows it just around the corner you know jesus says assuredly not all of you shall pass away before you see the son of man coming in his glory you know and that's like him talking to people that were in front of him him saying that the kingdom of god will come before their lifetime is over you know so it's always been kind of hinged on that like look out he's coming back that kind of thing right yeah but isn't there also like a whole uh, eat, eat of my flesh and you will never die? Yeah, there's, I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of and weird so stuff if, in the And so if Bible. you never die, then for sure, something's going to happen before you're gone. <laughs> right? Yeah, something weird. Something weird. But so, like, I mean, something. The revel, like the uh, rapture and end times and all that stuff talked about in the Bible is actually pretty, I think what the kids call sus, you know, it's a suspect. Sus yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't seem to be, uh, it doesn't seem to be written about. It's not a, it's not a chord with an added, uh, nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the summer of 69, bro. Right. That's right. Four people got that joke. <laughs> There's three people out there. And they're all over the age of 45, except for you. <laughs> uh, God, I have. There's so much to talk about. We have yeah. so much to talk about. Yeah. I want to. I want to talk about the podcast. Your podcast. Sure thing. Let's get high and read the Bible. Yeah. I want to talk about your the way you grew up, your upbringing, because as long as I've known you, who you are has been like firmly grounded and attached to who you have always been. And yeah. um, you've never, you've always been very vocal about your belief system. Yeah. Evangelistic, For, you might say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <sighs> and, and then I want to talk about your your life in rock and roll. Sweet, I like all this shit. Um, no, there's there's a lot to talk about in all of it, and <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we got right into it. We talked about weather for two minutes. Two minutes. I'm, we don't like small talk. That's our friendship. It's based around this. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, should we? I guess the origin. Let's let's talk about. Um, tell me about what your what your parents did and how you grew up and <laughs> because it's and we can abbreviate it because i what i want people to do is i want people to go check out your podcast okay yeah, and yeah um yeah yeah I but it's a, you weird. have a very you have a very interesting story yeah it's unique to say the fucking least right yeah um basically my my parents were both like reformed hippies fell in love with Jesus and got really, really into Jesus. Um, was your dad a long haired Jesus person? Yeah. yeah he so he, like so they were like, they were the people that people talk about when they talk about long haired Jesus freaks. Yeah. For a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, especially after the war for my dad, he was not too into the war, you know, Vietnam. So um, I think he felt probably pretty lost and, that's that's where they found refuge. But that's one that they're not going to do reenactments of. <laughs> it's never, it's never going to be that. No, it's not. Fuck. no, it was not fun, and you know, and so that's where it starts with them, like first getting married, and you know, kind of like Calvary Chapel. I don't know if you've ever heard of that group. Kind of like almost, they're like the hippie Jesus people from California. They're cool. Um, okay yeah yeah so it starts off with that but then my dad is just this weird crazy force of nature he was a teacher at the time and he was, was thought that the school system was completely bullshit so he's he probably right let his kids be yeah yeah i'd say so you know i mean not to the extent that it went out on me not like <laughs> you know because fast forward I've, I've never taken a test I had to teach myself to read when I was 14, you know? So like, 
we get homeschooled because of this and um that leads to this <laughs> you know there's just certain type of people that homeschool their kids because of jesus right right and so the groups and the people that i hung around um i didn't realize because they were the only people i'd ever hung around at that point but i didn't realize how intense they are right. about their faith yeah so it's like i grew up in like the smallest church in the smallest town and the smallest version of the Baptists. Um, and in this little town in Washington where you grew up, was was the majority of that community made up of people that went to this fundamentalist church? No, not really. But for me, yes. Because the community you guys spent yeah, your time with were all yeah. members of the church. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of like QFC the church in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, I grew up alone in the woods, you know, at our house. Um, my dad built every home we ever lived in. So like there's pictures of me at six with like a level, you know, like pounded right. nails. And so we had bought this house out in the middle of the woods. It seemed like a good idea. And it was like this old 1930s, 1913, I believe actually, um, log cabin. Like it was a log cabin out on this acreage out on a river. But uh, we bought it before really realizing how bad of a shape it was in. So uh -huh. it's like it rained inside. Uh, there was no heat, no insulation. Like I thought God was preparing me to be a missionary in Antarctica or something. Because like, right. <laughs> yeah. of how cold it yeah, because yeah, like, let's yeah. not say you've never taken a test. <laughs> Huh? Well, so I've never taken a I state. read Job. I read the book of Job. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. Yeah. 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 So this, like, you know, it starts off my whole life. The church is like the epicenter of my daily activities. I'm homeschooled, so my first class every day is reading the Bible. It's called devotional. Um, and my social group my like everything i know is from these from this area people from the church and people who are from religious and um you know when you grow up that way with not knowing much about the other outside world you know everything's kind of rad like uno was fucking awesome you right. know and like it's like i uno thought it we was were awesome right. for me and i wasn't homeschooled i mean okay. uno is just kind of a great card game i see after yeah okay okay i'll give it to you but yeah, that starts off like my whole religious background, right? Because my family was deeply into it. So I'd go to summer camps about it. And, you know, from the age of about eight, I believe, on, I was like asking questions about God, um, you know, sitting in my back fucking yard, looking at a daffodil, wondering why it doesn't explode into a billion pieces. Right. You know, so that all that wonder kind of comes in there. Then on top of that, all like I'm really active in the church, you know. Um, so like I, I do music and I, I as, as I get older, I become a youth pastor. I end up going to Russia, living there, doing some mission work. I go to Mexico about 17, 18 times, maybe building homes for homeless people. But everywhere I go, you're taking your church with you. So right. in Russia, my roommate is the pastor, you know, and right. so you're not really getting like the full, like I Were did you building cause... houses. So this is the nineties. You're in Russia in the nineties. I think I was there 2000. Yeah. Maybe 99. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were down in a little dipsy doodle depression around then. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Were, were you, you weren't building homes there. No, you were I, just evangelizing. I played music at a, uh, Moscow Bible College in Moscow. So I would do the wow. morning music, uh, which was hilarious because they were all way better than me because everyone there plays like piano and fiddle and like, you know, harmonica. Right. And they can like bring it. Shred. Harmonies, like everything. They're, they're fucking wow. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So here's like little, little tiny Christian Leif, like with his guitar and his, his fucking third eye blind chords, you know. <laughs> that's great yeah and then the mexico stuff it's great through this um they're called a moor in fact it still happens and they go and 
go into a spot in Tijuana and they just build homes for homeless people, schools and churches. And so you go in and in a week, you, you, you know, first day you pour a foundation. And at the end of a week, you have a house built. On so, whose property? Does the church buy the property? As far as I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean. So, you know, there's good people doing a, good shit out there too, you know. Yeah. I hate Excuse to me. be a. I hate to call this sus, as the kids say. <laughs> I just learned that from someone tonight. Um, but if the church is buying the real estate, it's also kind of getting into the real estate. But I don't want to like oh. take away from the good that ch- that ch- the church was doing in in building these homes. But isn't that owning real estate that is not taxable? I mean. Are you saying that a church could possibly be acting in its own financial interest? Is that what you're alluding to here? I, I'm not, not entirely because I see the goodness in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I just want to say, yeah. If the church bought the property and they can't be taxed and eventually they sold it. Yeah. Yeah, I um I don't know with that that specific ministry. I actually think yeah. I, I don't back many Christian organizations, but I think that one I do. I'm not sure, right. but like, but yeah. you were out doing good work. Like you were there trying. You weren't being paid, and you were just out there loving Sleeping Jesus and helping quarry. people who needed help. Yeah, try. You know, that's and when you grow up, constantly being fed stories about this magical person, Jesus, and you know you are thinking all day about like how to get into heaven, you know, that's kind of what to be you fair. Want. Jesus sound pretty rad. Um, yeah. T- yeah. If you, the Jesus of like the gospels, if you take right. the good stuff about him, it's he's the fucking best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, inevitably in every single type of like, uh, organization, there's weird, weird stuff. Uh, well, there's people. In. People. That's that's people. a good way to say it. People. People happen. Yeah. People, and you know, people have you ever are heard of, not. Have you ever heard of people? Have you ever heard of church politics? Oof. <laughs> I mean, is that like, <laughs> is that like the kind of stuff that happens inside of yeah, church? Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you're splitting up the, you know, like percentages on the songs. You know, it's kind of like that. You know, so there's like right. one guy at the top, and he's always it's it. You see well, that's, like. It's to be expected. We're humans, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, but, um, you know, the weirder part about growing up as, like, for, like, I mean, you you know, I was around you talking about saving my virginity for my wedding night and stuff like that all the time. And, right. And you grow up, like, really believing in this stuff. Um, the reason I did so much is I hadn't read the whole Bible, you know? And I hadn't really grappled. You with hadn't, a lot. as a as a young person. No, I taught myself to read by reading the Bible. Um, when I was like, the church I went to handed out these like uh, memory verses every week. Yeah. They were like you could put them in your Bible as like a bookmarker, right? So like I would just look at the words a lot, and then every Sunday I would hold that little memory verse card thing up, and as they read, I'd be like, "That's but," and "That's the," and "That's between," you know. And then um, this thing called awana have you ever heard of awana i attended awana for a short while you did i'm from washington man dude i'm the i'm the state champion i memorized four full books of the bible wow (laughs) which four (laughs) oh like little ones like first and second john you know like like the, the, the three chapter was yeah but still it was four books from them and then that was like if for people who don't know awana's like boy scouts but Bible, so you earn merit badges by like <laughs> memorizing. I feel like me and one of my other poor friends, we <laughs> would go, and I feel like we got fed dinner when we went to Awana uh, events. I think that there was like there was there was greater incentive than the communal uh, love of God and Jesus uh, at okay. Awana. Yeah. yeah, pretty sure we got. Yeah, fed. there's a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. Your church sounds cooler than mine. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <Growing up. laughs> 
<laughs> but um, you know, saying that the verses back to them all the time, you know, and right. having them, that's kind of how I taught myself to read. So it took me till I was about like probably, I think honestly, like 18 to have read the whole Bible. 19. Right. Definitely right before I started touring. Um, but then I was also obsessed with it. So like I would just listen to it on cassette tape while I played video games or like while I worked. And that was like a big deal in my family. What, were you playing like perspective, like killing no. video, like war no. type games? Or were you playing like Pac-Man? Yeah, the closest. I mean, it was like whatever system was like a million years old. So like when the right. 64 Paul. came out, we had the NAS finally, the NES, you know, <laughs> like, right. so it was like, you know, was anything like missed. Do you remember that game on the computer? Maybe. It was, was hard. it a there perspective? Was a it was hard for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, whatever. You were still at living at home though. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, see, this is why, this is why you're like, there's a lot to get into because my, my whole life and family is kind of this crazy dynamic because I, I ended up living there for a long time, helped my mom out and stuff. So, um, but I think what you're getting at is there's, there's not much secular stuff allowed in my home. Like, like I didn't know about black Sabbath. I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, we didn't have rated our movies. Um, you guys probably got to listen to the carpenters though. no, no, really? That, yeah. It was like it was like Carmen. Do you know who Carmen is? Nope, dude. I Carmen at peace. Some, no, I'm gonna send you some songs. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna fucking flip out. <laughs> like DC Talk, Audio Adrenaline, um, like any Christian band, uh, right? Yeah. So we nothing secular was really allowed in, um, and those bands always just rip off other bands. So I would just listen to the Bible, play video games, listen to the Bible work we also you know were building this house as we were living in it so like i didn't really go to school anymore i just like dug out worked on the house yeah we just you know we poured the whole foundation my brother and i in buckets like this wow entire house yeah so huh. lo <laughs> yeah a lot of a lot of bible so um, right yeah so i just grew up obsessed with it and then the weird part was is like uh Let's see, how did this happen? So I was I was like 14, and I really didn't know who I was. And I was always kind of bigger, so like I, f I thought I would just play football or something. So I was like waking up every morning throwing a football through a tire in my backyard at like 5 a.m. Like, right. Because I just thought that's, you know, Practice. i got to get good at this. This is what I'm going to do. And I, I go to this Christian camp, and I lose a three-legged race which is weird. I was just carrying the kid, you know, just like running, <laughs> carrying it. Right. And it, I don't know, this is the dumbest thing, but it like, because I'm so sheltered and so homeschooled and so like, you know, this is most likely the most amount of people I've ever seen in one setting is at this Lake Retreat camp out in Washington. Um, after this race, I go back to my, my uh, like uh, bunk, you know, like our, our little cabin and my camp counselor had gotten one of those like shitty strats with the strat pack amp you know yeah and right when i walked in he played that riff from smells like teen spirit like and i like I'm, i it was like the stupidest movie cliche but like i grabbed his arm i was like i don't know what you just did but that's the only thing i care about and so like i became completely obsessed with guitar like completely like if i wasn't wait a minute let me ask you a question about the race yeah <laughs> Where, so you i mean i think when you are into something you're you're deeply into it you're a pretty obsessive guy yeah and so i have to assume that you went into this race thinking you're gonna win yeah you had a lot of confidence when oh, you yeah. didn't win did you take that as some sort of sign from God that you were on the wrong path? Is that what I'm gathering? Um, I think this might have been just more of like puberty hitting me and turning on. You know, this might have been more of like looking dumb in front of girls or something like right. that. But what you're asking, yes, those kind of feelings happen constantly. Um, 
right. if, yeah, if something doesn't work out, if I messed up something on the job site, yeah, I would be like, oh, that was because you, like, you saw the magazine in the store and it had boobs. This is a it. lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You sinned. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> <laughs> this uh, that dynamic is going to get interesting when you go on the road in a, two years from now oh, in the storyline. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it really did. Yeah, that was um, yeah the spoils of Babylon. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know that's the funnier part is like so I'm not allowed to listen to any motherfucking music. It has to be Christian music, right? And I. When, I'm, when I was 18, I got a job at Starbucks in Maple Valley. And, like, it was the first time that I met non-Christian people. It was the first time I'd ever met someone who wasn't a Christian. Uh, was at, in Maple Valley. And um, my, one of my best buds comes from working at this place. But it was right next door to Rocket Records. So, <laughs> yeah. I know Rocket Records. Yeah, dog. So I was... I was like 18. I was obsessed with guitar. I hadn't told anyone that I've been, since I was 14, I've just been playing guitar for like 15 hours a night in my bedroom, you know? Um, and uh, someone came into Starbucks and was like, dude, there's this really cool band that's going to be playing over at Rocket Records in like a couple of weeks. <laughs> and it was you guys. <laughs> so like, yeah, I saw you guys play at Rocket Records when I was 18. You had the reverse flying bird or uh, the, the reverse firebird. Yeah. I think. But it wasn't a, it was it a, wasn't a Gibson, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was something weird about it. I remember that. Yeah. Redding, Rouse, and like you guys played that little <laughs> goddamn store. Oh, yeah. So, that, was a fu- that was a fun one. That was rad, man. And I didn't know because I'd never seen a picture of Duff. And I'd actually never heard Guns N' Roses at this point in my life. I didn't know who he was. And so someone told me he was a bass player. So I just assumed Rouse was him. So I went up to Rouse after the show. And I was like, what's it like uh, being a, what was it like being a Guns N' Roses? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Isn't that weird, right? Because like, fast forward, you know, 10 years from then, it's like me and you sitting in a van for 17 hours just watching Lost on her phones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Should, I, should I keep going? I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I love this. This is working so, out? No, it's great. This is, uh, this is gold. <laughs> this is gold. So how long had you been playing guitar at this point? So um, when I was 18? Yeah, did, like, when did you get a guitar? Oh man, this is so ridiculous. So many of my stories are kind of ridiculous, but this is this is pretty funny. Um, so I come home from that camp, right? I mentioned, and I go to my dad, and I'm like, I really want to play guitar, you know. And um, my dad, excuse me, this coffee. My dad is like notoriously pretty cheap. He's like, like really, I'll build you one. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Basically, that was his first initial thing until he talked to a friend but he he somehow produced after i told him this i'm like i want to play guitar he comes out of his room with like a spanish guitar you know the one with the action that's like he had one he had one and i had been i I looked for christmas presents and shit in their room and our house had a bunch of holes in the walls and you know it's pretty hard to hide shit you know there, there wasn't even like drywall you know um so <laughs> is it possible like, that it just never like you saw it, but it never even occurred to you because you didn't care. Radar. It just, yeah. It just looked like a piece of ugly furniture to you. Probably very, very possibly, you know? Um, yeah, very possibly. So he brings it out and he plays a song on it. It's like this, uh, it's called little black egg. I forgot who it's by, but it's like got this little like hammer on, And it's just like a little melody. And he goes, when you can play this song, I'll buy you a guitar. Um, So I run upstairs and just start frantically fucking playing. I just like, I remember every, I just remember everything he played. I'm like staring at his fingers. Just like, don't forget it, run upstairs. And I'm like, so I stay up all night. (laughs) All all night up in my shitty little room (laughs) playing this guitar. And then uh, about five o'clock, 
I hear my dad getting up, getting ready for work. So I'm like practicing it a bunch more times. And, you know, I'm hearing him go through the routine, the food, bathroom, this thing, that thing. And I'm like, I know he's like about to leave. Like this is, he's about to get out the door. So I just run down the stairs. I'm like, dad, 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 dad. And I play the song that he played me the day before. Like, you know, and he, he was so fucking mad. He was, so <laughs> he was, he was like, Fuck, man. You know how much guitars cost, you little exactly, fucker? Exactly. Exactly. He was so pissed. So, but true to his form, it was a, I got a strat, like a, he kept a his super word. Strat. Yep. Christmas. I got an EMG super strat with the Floyd Rose. That was my first guitar. Yeah. Killer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, he kept his word. That's, I mean, that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah, and well, you know, he he's such a crazy, he's he's amazing, yeah. But like, you know, he's pretty intense human, like hard to keep up with, and he was always obsessed with music. So even though I'm not allowed to listen to music, he's got a stereo room with like ten thousand vinyl in it. And what what kind of music is he listening to? <sighs> oh my god! Like whatever is top forty at the time. He he really right. so he's like listening he, to like Kenny Loggins and yes. like. Yes. The Doobie Brothers. He's taking it to Kinda, the street. You no, know, more like bread. He'd go like, you know what I'm saying? It would America. Be more, yes. Yes. Now you're on the vein. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he'll get like some weird stuff in there, like the talking heads, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Like every once in a while. But it was pretty, pretty top 40. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think he was pumped to see it happen. And then once that happened, I was just that was it. You know, I'd already, I was, I got a construction job when I was 14. So I was building houses when I was 14 and, um, it was doing all right by me. So school hadn't really, didn't seem to be working out. You know, I didn't, I never really done any of it anyway. So right. I was like, I should do this shit. So how did you learn sitting there by myself and just playing notes until you figure out what's on the fucking What's on the record? So you weren't you know, able you weren't able to connect with other kids or or any mentors that taught you anything. The me. internet, I know, really wasn't an option for nope. lessons at that point. Nope. Magazines? Not, you know, well, if not, what Christian magazine has a tab in it? You know, right? You couldn't you couldn't have Guitar World in your home. Eventually, I could, um, but in my young teens and beginning, no. Yeah, when I when I like when I was around eighteen, you know, um, right? You know, they would let me do that. My mom would let me do that kind of stuff. But we were also running like three small businesses at that point, and you know, hard to keep track of what yeah. magazines you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, I'll stay up all night um, just playing because like that's all I want to do. There was a there was a band at my church too. There was a drummer that went to North Texas, and like he was great, and. Um, they played this Maple Valley days. Do you remember Maple Valley? Have you ever heard of that? No, but it's probably like any of the small oh yeah. Regional like festivals, yeah. right? Strawberry Festival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Andy Harms. Do you remember Harms? I know his name, yeah. Yeah. Did he, he does... go on to be at the radio <gasps> station? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was actually I believe he was at the Rock Record show too. Let me clear my throat. He was a member of your church? No. <clears throat> He played Maple Valley Days the same year that I faked my way into a band. It's just nice. a weird memory I have of seeing him there. But um, so I see this band play at Maple Valley Days, and the drummer used to go to my church, and um, they come up to me and they ask me for this guy's number who plays guitar. And at that time, I was like, I could play like Semi Charm Life, but they're great. Like, like that's about it. Like I could play those G, C, and D. Yeah. Um, and I was, they were like, you know, hey, do you have this guy's number? And I was like, why? Do you want him to play guitar? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, you want me to play guitar. <laughs> and like, <laughs> like in front of my little brother and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked. I got an audition. So I go audition with these guys. And like, I mean, it, it had been a rough week. Like my parents had broken up the week that I was doing mm. this. You know, there, and there, you know our, our, our family, like I said, this house we lived in was like falling down a hill and had no heat and so growing up wasn't it was, it was rough but um yeah i go into this audition and they it's just so obvious that i, I cannot play guitar like i can't fucking 
<laughs> I could play like two chords of every song, you know? Right. And there's like these octave melody lines and like, you know, typical like guitar parts that would go in a two guitar band. <laughs> yeah. And so like, like after the second song, the lead singer finally kind of was just like, Ira was like, do, do, do you know how to play? And I was like, no, but I can bring 150 people to the first show. And so that's what I did to get in the band. I like brought 150 people. I think I brought like 200 to the next show. Buddy, hey, you know what? Leverage whatever you can. <laughs> uh, smoke them if you got them is what I say. <laughs> did you make yeah. good on that promise? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, that's great. Were they all your friends from church? Um, so you know, I, I probably because of the evangelistic shit growing up. I like, um, like you know me. It's it's like a burn the boats type of thing. Always, you know. I always it's like if you're into something, you should be into it. You know. So like, I would put up posters. I would, you know what. Like I'd go work extra All shifts at coffee shops. Yeah, I'd even put tell up posters. Tell everyone. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which is hilarious, you know, because like I, I like I suck. Like uh, the first... how did the first? Let me ask you this. Let's just skip forward <laughs> straight to the first show. How much okay. work did you put in to prepare for the first show, and how 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 was the payoff? Um, to the amount of work that you did? Did you you made it through the first show because you're still alive? How did it go? It's fucking, it was crazy. So my first show ever was playing in this, this thing called Hope Fest in Linden, Washington. It's a Christian festival. Yeah. Okay. And that was huge So it's a Christian band. Um, Yeah, it was a bunch of Christians in a band. And like me, I wanted it to be a Christian band. I was like way into, way into that kind of stuff then. And we like we got courted by a bunch of Christian labels. Like, you know, I've, before I played in rock bands, I toured a bunch in Christian bands, like played TBN, um, went up and down the, yeah, (laughs) that was a weird gig. There's, there's real money to be made in, in that music scene. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's built in audiences already. There's built in audiences and built in budgets. Yeah. 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 Um, but you know, back in the, I don't even know if I can say this actually, but let's just say most of those people get down. Most of those Christian artists like, right. And on their alone time, they like to party. Like my friend used to sell like the biggest Christian band there is back in the nineties. He used to sell them like garbage sacks full of weed. Like, right, <laughs> you know, so well, like you have to, so long as he asks, are. you ask for forgiveness every week and <laughs> move on, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, right, yeah, it's only human, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I'm not here to throw stones, yeah, so uh, yeah, <laughs> just get stoned, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, at what point? At what point do you get into a band or do you start to sort of explore outside of that community of folks? It was pretty much instantly, actually. So check this out. That first band I was in was called Common Heroes. Um, Mm -hmm. When, like I said, I was 18 when I joined it. So we go up to Seattle, which I honestly, you know, I'd seen like the Space Needle and shit, you know, but I didn't know how many people, I didn't know there was that many homes in Seattle. You know, right. it was <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> so like, I'm like, I'm in you know the band van or my drummer's truck probably at that time. Like, I'm just like, what? And um, they were making a record with Martin Fevier. So my first time in a studio ever was at Jupiter with Martin. Um, pretty really? weird, huh? Yeah, right. I know. Found found the found Mecca right away. Found the best kept secret. <laughs> <laughs> I love recording with Martin. He's the best. He's amazing. Yeah. So you can imagine like an 18 year old Leif with like basically Janko jeans and like one of those ball chain necklaces, you know, like the big right. ones. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> and I've never even, you know, like, you know, I'm not allowed to date. I'm not allowed to be alone with girls. Um, I've never... Uh, anything. I, You've any, never anything. Yeah, yeah, really, pretty much at this point. And here's, like, Martin Fevier talking about, like, the rusty trombone. And, right. like, you know, you know... All the, yeah, You're just like... like is this man going to do me? Is, is he going to touch me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I meet him. We, you know, they were finishing up a record. I didn't record on it, but um, the next record we did was with Burke Thomas. So I instantly were recording with Burke because we had a bunch of songs we were working all the time. And then assuming um, at this point you've made some strides in your ability to play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is. So <laughs> <laughs> what I did was, um, so I joined any band that would let me join. And it was a bunch of Christian bands. And I like, so I was playing for like five different bands. And I sucked. I sucked. And um, this summer, I had this one summer where I just locked myself in my room. Excuse me. This coffee, forgive me. Um, you know, the those voice memos? Like yeah. those, you can record phone. Yeah. Well, like, you remember the old little record, standalone recording? You know, oh, yeah. Of, yeah. So I had this one that had a halftime feature where it would slow it down. Oh, yeah. And so I just, like, I had this live DVD of Guns N' Roses in Tokyo, uh -huh. and I would just record solos, and then I would, like, do it halftime. And so it would drop it, like, seven frets, you know? So it wouldn't be, like, do, 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 do. It'd be, like... Do, 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 do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I could figure it out so like I just didn't sleep for this whole summer and by the time I got out I could play enough to like fake my way pretty good and then I joined this band Pris uh, playing bass with Burke and that's kind of where like everything happens so we go on our first I go on my first west coast tour with him I was 18 and then he puts me in like 14, 15, 17 different bands with him. Like we did that Third Eye Blind thing. We did his band Pris and then just whatever band he was working on, um, I kind of play guitar for. Um, and so eventually that w I, that's how I got in Vendetta Red too. So, wow. Yeah. Burke and Thomas. so Vendetta Red, you act, you go, you like make some records, you go on tour. Well, they had made a record. So, and that's it, they had made like the best record um and so burke actually takes me out <laughs> i don't even know if burke knows this um burke takes me out for a drink and he's like you know hey you should you should join this band and at the time i was still pretty christian right you know so it was like you were, i mean you were pretty christian when i met you like, yeah yeah it was I, right I up mean, until i smoked later. weed yeah, yeah, I mean, you're a Christian <laughs> when we were playing rock -or gigs. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to be. Um, but yeah, about 30, when I start smoking weed, that's, uh, you start asking too many questions, you know. Right. Um, but uh, um, I forgot where I was. Oh, wine. Yeah, so Burke Wait. asked me to join this band, you know, and I'm yeah. like, you know, they like curse and like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, like dark was, music. Yeah. And I, you know, at the time I was doing pretty well. Like I basically got to be slash and the band I was in, I just got to play like a hundred solos. And like, you know, I was playing with Tony from third eye blind. And I was like, you know, whatever. so I didn't, I didn't even really listen to the music. Like, cause I was just like, Oh, I probably won't do it. You know? Right. Um, and then about a week before my audition, um, they played as a four piece in Olympia and I go down. It was the first, like I've, I've opened for them a bunch, you know, with Briss and stuff and I know them, but it was the first time I saw them. Like they fucking lit that room on fire. It was Cause like, originally they were two guitar players, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. That band was around for a really long time. I think Zach started in like 97, you know, so wow. it was around for a long time. It's got a, more than a calendar full of members, definitely, um, you know. Right. <laughs> but, like, dude, you know, I, I'd gone down to see the show being like, I'm not going to join, you know, whatever. And they fucking were so goddamn good. I was like, there is absolutely nothing that will keep me from joining this band. 
<laughs> I was right. Like, I bought a 24 pack of Rockstar. Stayed up for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Learned every single song on every single record. Didn't need to. Didn't need to. But uh, yeah, and then that kicks that off. So I, I, my first real tours, like nation tours, laminates, that kind of stuff, parties, you know, um, is with them. You know, where you get like on the road getting per diem. Like, you know, we played the Roxy was I think my second show with them, which is like was crazy to me because I was so obsessed sure bands. yeah and there's real rock band stuff going on backstage and after shows we don't have to talk about any any people's stories specific we like we don't need to go into anyone else's yeah. story or experience but being around all that kind of activity how is young impressionable Leif dealing with it <laughs> not yeah not good because you're like 23, 24? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right. it, it, pretty accelerated pace, right? So, like, I start playing when I'm 18, go on my first tour when I'm 18, um, you know, start playing in all these cool bands, playing with all these cooler people. I definitely was like, what? What's going on? And then now, all of a sudden, you're like, in Michigan, you just played for 6,000 people, and it's snowing outside, and, you know, you get invited. Right. These girls are like, come back and watch Zoolander. And I'm like, I really want to see that movie. You know, <laughs> like, so you go back to the house and they're and like, it. right, exactly. You know, and so that was actually, this is, yeah, that was a real event. And like, that was our tour manager at the time was horrible, horrible, um, just a hot mess. You know, you know, one of those guys that's like, he was in a band, he's really cool, everyone loves him, but he, it's like, maybe he was drinking too much or just couldn't keep his shit together. Sure. So like, everyone was trying to get him a job. Well, like, all these girls invite us back to this party <laughs> and Burke didn't go. So I should have known that was like, that was my like canary in the coal mine the for compass. this event. Yeah. Yeah. And he was giving me eyes, but I, you know, I wanted to see fucking Zoolander. I hadn't seen it, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, so what, what happens at this house? Well, you don't like, have to talk about what other people do, but what? Yeah. Well, instantly that tour manager and this girl are making out. And then he like, touches her breast and i'm like i i didn't even know you could do that <laughs> so i'm like sitting here like on a couch and like you know, like all, you know as as they start making out obviously people are pairing up and stuff like that but i'm just like i had no no idea so i ended up um there was a yeah <laughs> I don't know how far I can tell into these stories, actually. But let's just say, like, my cheeks are constantly red. Just, right. Just burning on fire. Plus, I don't drink at the time. I don't smoke. I, I My whole back bench in the van is just, like, Bible thesauruses and ancient Greek. And, like, the Strong's, you know, commentary on the Bible and stuff. And so, like, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Your head shake is so good. I can just, I mean, I can only imagine those what, fellas and me. So, like, I mean, well, so you, when you get into the van after, after a night like this and you see what folks are up to, what's going through your mind? Are you, is it just, are you underwater? Are you thinking, please don't let this, don't let this, uh, you know, uh, affect me. I, I want to go to heaven. Are you still like, yeah. I No, like, what's I'm, happening? Yeah. Like I will, um, I spend a lot of time walking cause you know, it's also weird too, because like, um, you know, you remember, but not when I joined that band, but before I joined that band, they got a, they were had a, lot, a pretty hot buzz. Yeah. You know, and like, so there's, there's a lot of eyeballs, let's say. And so I think that even drove crazy behavior even more. Sure. Know? And so like, for me, it was like, I would write letters home about how I was going to quit. Um, and I would like, I would just like stand on stage. Like I remember coming out on the stage one time at what's that club and, uh, Minneapolis that Prince owns, or Prince owned, the, the Avalon. 
Oh, I don't know. It's like you guys played stage, that club it's like though. Trees. Yeah, we were playing that, you know, and it was sold out. It was cool, um, but like the whole band was in a fight, and I was the only one on stage. You know, I shouldn't tell these stories, huh? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's not like that. It's not like Vendetta Red has a reputation for getting along with each other. No, <laughs> like no one is under that. <laughs> no one is under that impression. No one. <laughs> You know, yeah, I love them, but you, but you, I mean, yeah, don't throw anyone under the bus. That's we don't have to, we don't <laughs> have to go awesome. there. Every band, they're all awesome. Every band has their thing, except yeah. for any band I've ever been in. Ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, but for me, you know, who's coming from a spot where it's like, you know, I'm not even a, allowed to be alone with a girl, you know, like because my family believes in courtship. So if I want to date a girl, my family has to come with me. Um, you right. have to all be, so you're not tempted. So you're not allowed to hold hands. You know, the church I grew up in, you're not allowed to dance. Um, you know, so I'm coming from that kind of that angle. Like, you know, so it's, it's almost comically like Kingpin or like one of, you know, like the Amish guy from Kingpin, you know, it's right. like, like, I don't know anything that's going on. And as I'm watching it, all I can think of is all these stories from the Bible about sin, you know? Sure. And so it was like, uh, it was, it was really heavy. It was really heavy. But at the same time, I'm having the coolest conversations. You know, I'm, we're playing these shows that are like, I, I'm, I cannot believe that I got to play shows like that. You know, let me like ask you this. Amazing. I know that you only, no, you only intimately know your own perspective from that period of time. What do you think the other, the rest of the band's impression of you is? Oh, I think they must have thought I was a moron. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. party pooper. This guy's <laughs> no, fucking not wasting party. his time. Yeah, no, I think people kind of realized it was all really well intentioned. You know, like I really was concerned about people going to hell. Like, did you, did you talk to people about that? Oh yeah. It's my whole life mission was to save people from hell, you know? Oh, it's one of my least favorite things just to hear. Like, I just, I'm, I'm concerned for your eternal soul. Yeah. And you know, what helped me the most, which is insane, uh, is like I was saying, these conversations, you know, like you having conversations with you after gigs, Jonah, Nabil, even Nabil called me on my bullshit one time on some shit. My family, <laughs> some story my family made up. I always, believed. right. He's like, no, that's bullshit. And I was like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> you know, like, what do you mean? I just, you know, I was raised to obey my parents and believe my parents. And, you know, so like, um, I really have to credit that and those nights to like, sparking off my own individuality for me actually going out into my life and finding myself, you know, cause you can only work with what you got. Right. And I didn't have much. Right. Yeah. I didn't have much. <laughs> huh. It's weird though. I get lost in these Christian stories, huh? They, they, they're kind of almost endless. Well, I mean, they can, they can be because when you get when you start diving into the details, it sparks other stories, and and that's just how it works, yeah, you know. But that's how they keep the mind control on the people in the congregations. Well, I you know, I've told this story before, and I've probably even told it to you. But like, you know, when I got to Seattle, I was like, "Fuck the church, fuck Jesus, all of it's all fake." And I hate it. <laughs> and that was, you know, founded on nothing, really. You know? Like, and and then I was going through these, to through ads in the Rocket magazine, looking for a band yeah. to join at a point when I needed a band. Fuck yeah. And there was an ad in there that, you know, it was like, oh, this is my gig. Oh, yeah, this is my gig. And, and at the, because they needed a bass player, they were on a label, they toured, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, it said, 
uh, looking for open-minded individuals. I'm like, this is me, but not so open-minded that you hate Christians. And I thought, fuck, this is me. (laughs) And, and I, it made me realize what an idiot I had been. Like, that's a stupid, that's a stupid thing. What, hating all Christians? Well, just hating any gr- any group of people or just yeah. looking down your... I didn't hate it. I just looked down my nose because I thought that that it was foolish. And I don't, I don't think it's foolish anymore. I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of good in it. I there think. can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It has yeah, the, I... the potential for greatness. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, it, it, not lately. Um, I think but... most importantly for a lot of people, there's community there <laughs> yeah. and there's a, there's, um, you know, there's a regularity in that community, you know? Yeah. It's, there's routine to the community and people need routine. People need regular practice and people, you know, yeah. people need all these things. And, uh, but some people need things uh, to be pretty simple. And, you know, the, and that's one problem. That's one thing that I think is problematic is that a Christianity has been simplified. And I think you're, yeah. and, and that's a, that's a segue to go straight. We're going to yeah. skip straight forward to <laughs> your podcast because yeah. the whole foundation the foundational message that you deliver over and over is that uh, Christians don't read the Bible, <laughs> which makes yeah. it which makes it pretty simple, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, I, that's gonna be a maybe that's just our mission statement. That'll be our, our logo right there. Um, well, I mean, that's the way I that's the way I've interpreted it. I've listened to yeah. all of the podcast episodes, oh. and I and I think that. Um, I feel like now you are really hitting the stride, especially because now you guys are actually reading the Bible. You guys spent a lot of time <laughs> just kind of talking and uh, focused on the a... first part of the title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and to be honest, that's kind of the big deal. Is like it's hard to fucking talk when you're baked out of your fucking mind <laughs> like that. <laughs> like it's been a challenge for me to. Uh, to keep it together and you know i have this idea for like six or seven years now um, i i've heard uh, yeah i've yeah, been waiting yeah. for it yeah right and like well but see for me it was like i i didn't realize that how uh not normal my experiences with christianity were how i was you know i've been exposed to the most extreme sides of it essentially and um that's not a normal christian and i didn't know that so i would always judge someone who would consider themselves like you said a normal christian really right. harshly especially because as they talk uh if they're talking about their faith or the bible if you've read the bible basically most of the stuff that comes out of their mouth isn't real like it's some sermon they heard and they're regurgitating it and it's not even the point that that pastor was probably trying to make it's it so I, I would get really angry and i didn't want to just like put out i didn't want to just be someone bashing christians or just being shitty you know like i don't no one needs more of that bullshit so i didn't really know if i could do it you know i didn't know if i could get on a camera and say at least neutral things you know right about the book and the faith so it took a long time um and I just, you know, like I said before, <laughs> I've like been studying the Bible every day of my life uh, in the morning. I'd wake up and read through the Bible. And um, is there, as, let me ask you this really quick. Yeah. Is there, there's not like a foreword or a prologue in the no. Bible. It's just <laughs> no. like, it goes right in. Yeah. There's not, is there any verse or any, section is there any thing anywhere in the book that sort of tells you how to read it oh like a like a systematic theology like this is what we believe type thing 
Well, no, more like here is how you should ingest this book. Like read this, read this much a day or read, uh, yeah. read every day I'm... or read weekly or read constantly or just fucking any kind mm. of instruction on how and when. Well, you know, I was taught to hide the word of God in my heart so I might not sin against God. So there's verses Book of definitely. Eli. What now? Book of Eli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, I think it's Isaiah, but I could be wrong. But um, there's that. But in uh, oh, that, I was talking about what you were getting at. Oh, that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Denzel, he's all yeah. blind. It's a fucking killer. Um, <laughs> There isn't any of what you're asking. In fact, Jesus states, uh, I speak in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not hear. So even the, the seminal character of the book, like, speaks in riddles. So, no, it's, it's kind of like a big-ass mystery, you know? And it, if you, if you uh, are looking at, it, you know, calling it a book isn't even really correct, right? It's like... Well, the title... It- it translates to book. Right. Right. I mean, we but, call you know, it the Bible, but uh, Biblio is mm-hmm. book. Yeah. So but, it's really you called know, the book, right? But it, it's like it's like a bunch of books shoved right. together over thousands of years of time that are written to different peoples and different times with different rituals, with different, you know, it's like, so when you, when you try to read all these stories cohesively together, you get a lot of, <laughs> a lot of what they call discrepancies. Right. So, so no, it's, it's very confusing. It's a very confusing book that says, uh, like in one chapter, he'll say, uh, um, you know, if your enemy scoffs at you, um, you know, turn the other cheek, offer him your cloak. Like, you know, there's all this thing of like continually give. And then three chapters later in the same book, it says, you know, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. That's Jesus talking, you know? So, D- well, it's kind of what... like if you got a greatest hits of the tw- last half of the 20th century album and it had what's love got to do with there it and all you need is love. Yeah. You'd be like, I don't understand. Right. Right. Yes. And it's right. the Bible is like the wow hits of like ancient times. <clears throat> like these stories were around before the Bible. Um, this is something sto- that you and I talked about on the phone, though, just yesterday. And when this hit me, it was like one of those like weird high school uh, revelation moments. But okay. two thousand years ago, just what it just wasn't that long ago. <laughs> it just fucking no. wasn't. No. And when I realized that, it kind of fucked me up. Where as Americans, we're like America, the greatest. We've only been around for two hundred and. 45 years. Yeah. 245 years we've been a, a sovereign nation. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, there was a when I was in Russia there was a town that was celebrating its 800th year or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, and it was like I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and 1200 years, yeah, you know, like that's a third of the way back. To when Jesus was alive. Yeah. So all I'm saying is that the translation and information gets lost quickly. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll do you one better. This is really fun. So Jesus, uh, he spoke Aramaic. Um, but do you know what language the Bible was written in? The New Testament? Greek. La- oh. So... Um, you know, so even the words that we're accrediting to Jesus in the Gospels and these the Old books, Testament, the Old Testament's in Hebrew, right? Because right. that's it's a the Jewish New book. Testament is written was originally in Greek, mostly in Greek. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's how it survives, right? There's this guy named the Apostle Paul or Saul of Tarsus originally, um, and he was really well educated, so he was the one that actually translated it. Most likely, those first Bibles. Or had a big part in it. He also writes like 13 books of the New Testament. Like He's the biggest contributor to the New Testament. He had the best contract. 
Um, he had a good contract. Yeah, he, it's a. We could go all day on this guy, the Apostle Paul, because like, so there's this in the Bible. To be an apostle, you had to have witnessed Jesus, right? Like the twelve, his disciples, right? To to be mm-hmm. to be in that inner core, you had to have seen Jesus. So Saul, this guy, um, he comes from like a rich family. Um, and he is a Pharisee. I don't know if you've ever heard of those people. The little tiny guy's wings? <laughs> no, they're like really, really strict, like uh, essentially like fundamentalist today. Got it. That would have been a Pharisee back then. So he's like one of these types. So he's actually stoning Christians at this point in his life. Okay. So he is like killing anyone who professes in Christianity. He's traveling on this road to Damascus and on the way God blinds him. And like Jesus comes to him in a vision and like talks to him. And is like, why Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then after this, he becomes Saul is a fundamentalist Jew. Yep. Mm -hmm. And after this, he becomes the kind of the number one Christian. But also if you, believe all the books accredited to him he's like very like the most sexist the most homophobic like like a lot of the verses of like women should learn at home in in silence you know under their husband that's all that all comes from this guy oh man i see i'm losing you already i'm no (laughs) yeah i'm nine chapters into uh the uh the immortality key right now and it's 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 heavy and it's and you i i'm starting to see the you know the uh the layers of the onion peel back right. and how how men you know as this power shift has occurred over thousands of years how how it happened how it came to be mhm yeah and you it's know it's fucking um, crazy it's yeah, gnarly it's a- because of that burning of the Library of Alexandria, right? And, you know, victors write history. And uh, Christianity takes over right about then, you know? Um, but if you, if, if you, there's so many weird verses in the Bible that come about around this time um, that are all about obeying the governing authorities. Right. And another weird thing happens because, you know, Jesus is Jewish and um, he's killed by Rome. But in the stories of Jesus in the gospel, it's the Jews that kill Jesus. So it's like they switch the bad guy, you know? And I'm not, I'm not obviously like Jesus in the hierarchy of religious figures of the time, but it heads completely and hate each other. But, you know, he was killed for, he was crucified for trying to overthrow Rome. So you would think that in the story, Rome would like get a lot of the blame, but Pontius Pilate like washes his hands, you know? Right. So like, yeah, so they like paint. And the reason is, is because uh, there was this thing called the Great Jewish Roman War. I think it was in 67 AD, 64 AD. Um, and a guy, I believe his name was um, Hezekiah, the bandit chief. He rides into what Jerusalem. What a fucking cool, cool name. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hey, that's my new hotel name. Dude, yeah, good, because I stole your old one. <laughs> yeah, Jacuzzi Sweets. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> Sorry, so, but anyway, um, this guy actually takes over uh, Jerusalem, and he sets it up free of Rome, and they live worshiping Yahweh, sacrificing the temple, and not giving to Caesar. And so he actually kind of accomplished, he, not actually, he accomplishes what Jesus wanted to, right? And then right. after this, Rome comes in, took him about four years to get there, just they destroy the whole thing, right? Well, I think they weighed them out and they all end up killing themselves up there. What, but what becomes of Hezekiah? I, sticks himself with his own knife, I believe. Um, He's, he doesn't get crucified upside down or... no impaled or anything he kills himself i believe the rest of the people up there end up yeah killing themselves in in the temple but the reason this is important for the formation of the gospels is because the gospels were written after this so this event takes place it you know rome wins and it's basically illegal to talk shit about rome right right 
So when the Bible, you know, the first gospel starts being written right about this time. Um, and so you, you see a change, right? And so it, it's like this really pro government almost document in a lot of ways. And it's like, you, you know, which is can, crazy because can... Jesus is super not, he's anti government, right? Dude, yeah, Jesus. Like I know people would be mad, would be mad at me for this, but like he has a lot more in common with like a re rebel figure than he right. does. Yeah, like you know, he, he's basically Osama bin Laden. Like you know, right. he's trying to overthrow the government. Like he's he's not into the government. He's not into taxation. He's not into selling goods in the church. He's not into profiteering religion and, yes, and 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 making money in the house of god or anywhere near it yes. he's not even a socialist right mm, i don't know i mean because i, I, I get the so i get bernie vibes Pretty because bernie vibes. because socialism involves taxation but he's kind of like doesn't he say give away everything and just commit yeah. your life to serving people yes what yeah. What do you think so, would happen if everyone did that? Maybe we'd all live in a rad, orgy-filled utopia. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but we'd all be awesome and happy. <laughs> like, God damn it. Why can't we all just... The problem you know, yeah. is people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and this really big book that's hard to get a handle on. And, right. You know, it, and you can quote one section of it and you know get one result and quote another section of it get another result so you know you, you see people using it manipulating it and acting as the gatekeepers between god forever you know catholic church i repeat it wasn't that long ago you know <laughs> pe here's the thing is that uh you know people who are who are judgmental christians and look down their noses at other religions yeah. Like, oh, this stupid new religion, you know, what they don't realize is, fuck, man, you know, we only got here four, <laughs> 450 years ago, what, f f 1500 we got here about, right? <laughs> got here for 1492, what? is that when we showed up here? It, when when white people discovered yeah, see, you remember I North never America. went to any school, so I think I so. I think okay. that 1492, <laughs> Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I think that's yeah. the rhyme. Yeah, there's a rhyme in there. So yeah, that's a hit. So that is, you know, that's only fifteen years, fifteen hundred years after uh, Christ's lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's not that fucking long. You know, and written recorded history comes around like 2000 BCE, right? Around around this time, and so it's like we haven't even really had stories written down that we could pass through the years to each other for very long. It also kind of fucked me up when I'm listening. I'm listening to that immortality key, and they're talking about like, oh, the third century BC. Oh yeah, and I'm and I'm thinking of. And I'm, so all of a sudden, I'm th I have to think of time, yeah, and uh, you know, linear time backwards. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're talking about as much time before Christ as, like, more, like yeah. a whole century more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that when the I think it's the Epic of Gilgamesh, right? So it's just uh, it's this is new. This is all new. But there's so so many things around us. So many things, archaeological finds all the time. These things are old as fucking balls. These fucking things are old, <laughs> old, old. Like you talk about like Gobekli Tepe and stuff like that. Yeah, like all yeah. this shit is insane. So mm -hmm. people think they have a handle on on what what is here and what has always been here and they think they know but i don't think they know shit i think you know i yeah. think a lot of stuff has happened that we don't know man i so like have you seen that shit where it's like you can you'll look at a picture on your phone and it will be like 
For the record, I'm not high. (laughs) (laughs) Just for the record. (laughs) To to be honest, I think it's the only way I could read the Bible now in front of people, you know, because like offering my opinion on it is still pretty hard for me. Like, sure, you know, because it's so loaded. But uh, (laughs) um, I forgot where you were going with how this is so soon. But yeah, you know, Christianity, Judaism is the first successful monotheistic religion, you know, right? Like, you know, so this stuff is all brand new. But so Uh, Christianity borrows from so many sects. Well, and Judaism. so many other uh, belief systems, right? Yeah, I mean, mainly Judaism, but you can say Judaism comes from those because they they were they were part and parcel with this Mesopotamian cult. Well, culture. Jews don't celebrate Christmas, and Christmas Mm-mm. is, I mean, to say that like nobody fucking believes that that's really when Jesus was born anymore, do they? Oh, I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Really? Sure. Yeah. I mean. There's so much evidence to support yeah. the idea that it was appropriated, and just like, all right, well, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna envelop you, we're gonna involve you in this new governing practice, but to make you feel more comfortable and make it a more acceptable system for you to exist under, we're gonna include some of your old stuff. We're just gonna <laughs> sort of we're gonna change it. Okay, how's that? How's that sound? Your new stepdad is pretty cool, right? Your old stepdad. That's Christianity. Your old that- stepdad got you got you a new baseball glove. <laughs> but you're kind of right. Like I'm trying to poke holes in this right now. But like, yeah, yes, and. Um, the weirder part to me is that like Christianity um, borrows so much f- from this other religion, uh, but you know, it's like we just tack on, or you know, I shouldn't say we, but they just tack on uh, an older religion's book onto theirs, you know, and then they read it out of context without understanding and say that it applies to this verse over here and whatnot. It's, right. It's it's a bummer. I. And all all of that is not to say that it's a, you know, that it's a bad thing. Well, I, so, you know, for me, I, I could say, this is what I could say is I, I like, you know, in so many different ways. Like it was expressed to me that if I kept my virginity till I was married, that I would have a great relationship, you know, and all I ever wanted to do was tour and, you know, there's stigmas, there's ideas that go along with that lifestyle and I want my girl to be able to trust me. So I figured I would do that. Um, and you do that. Right. And so, and then most likely because of that, my marriage totally <laughs> failed. You know what right. I'm saying? So like, well, it's part of that. What I said before, where it's just simplified. Yeah. But so I think part of the failure, so that's the problem. Part of the the systematic failure is that communication, I don't believe, I don't think that humans are capable in our current state of mass communication. I think we do best in groups of fucking 10 or 20. Oh, man. You can talk, you can speak in details, Mm -hmm. you know, you Mm -hmm. you can speak in, in round table sort of format you can everyone can have a voice uh things can be gone over and details can be covered so that everyone has a a uniformed comprehension Mm -hmm. but you know not not everyone understands perceives or or uh, you know just like processes information this we just don't do it the same and so if you are trying to communicate even a simple idea to a thousand people, it becomes much harder. Why do you think Arena Rock is fucking dumb? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just fucking, it, you know, like music, there's more space in it. It mm-hmm. simplifies. Mm-hmm. 
because mm. it doesn't transmit. Like the vibrations don't don't get communicated. But you can fucking in a, a club or a theater. Fuck yeah, Mahavishnu man. Oh, but yeah. you're not going to see Mahavishnu Orchestra in a football stadium. Okay, you cut out, but I think I it all caught up. Yeah, I agree with you. I see what you're saying. But, like, the problem with this stuff is it's not simple, you know, because inside this book is supposedly the stories of us and the stories of how to get to heaven, right? And um, it says a bunch of different stuff. It says a bunch of different stuff. And um, outside of that, you know, I think the problem, because we're still talking about the church, right? Yeah. Simplifying this message. Yeah. I think the problem is, is that like when I, when I grew up in the church, it was really hard to find information, you know, um, like the path for me was, they were trying to push me to go to a Bible college, right? So you go to a college to learn about the Bible. Yeah. Uh, and most of those colleges that I was looking at, they were like, uh, their main mission statement is like, you know, believing in the inerrant word of God, you know, believing in the like completely inerrant word of God, you know, and when you hear that in a church in rural America and you don't have Google and you don't have access to archaeologists or like, you know, Gary Runsberg or whatever his name is, that rad Jewish archaeologist, um, you only know what you know, right? And so that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Yeah, this. Yeah, obviously there's no errors. If God's going to give us a book, you know, sure. we have to follow. The, why? Would, of course, there's not going to be an error. Otherwise, we, you know. Eh. And then you, <clears throat> with a su super simple Google search. One question. <laughs> well, doesn't isn't there a part? I, I, I'm I'm trying to remember from you guys talking. Doesn't doesn't God say like you can't even say my name? Like you can't pronounce my name. Isn't that a thing? Like he, my real name, you don't even know my real name. What you yeah. get is a stage name. Yeah, Yahweh. No one Yahweh knows is a stage name, name right? Mm -hmm. That's a well, stage name. See this. See, <laughs> so this gets deeper, and this is this is why I'm doing this podcast. Is if so we can't me. say his real name, how okay. how is this his? The word of God. This is the word of man. Well, I think that was probably attached to this idea that, like, when you are a scribe that is copying this Bible down for the rest of the ages, right? Because they don't have printers back then, right? right? There was a man that would physically, and you know, the Bible, the copies of the Bible we have, there's no spacing between the letters. It's just right. letter, 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 letter. There's no punctuations. It's just all the letters. There's no commas, no periods. There's, it's not broken up into verses. A scribe, the only, well, and this isn't for everywhere, but in many spots in the ancient, ancient Near East, the, the only requirement for being a scribe was signing your name. So the qualifying so you, skill was you need to be able to trace, basically. You need to be yeah. able to copy. Yeah, exactly. And so when you, you get need to, to be a guy name, that could reproduce the Mona Lisa convincingly. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're going to be rich. <laughs> well, that that's a big deal, too, because that that's called pseudopigraphy. That was a big deal back then, too. Um, so, like, let's say you're a farmer and you have like a young son and maybe you had a good crop. And so you get to send him to a school and he learns how to write and read, you know, and then you get a, your handle on some fucking paper and you're like, hey, hey, Jebediah. Like, write down everything you read that Socrates said and then just sign Socrates at the end. Or, you know, write down every you know, whatever person right. they would they could fetch some money for at the market. So, yeah. Um, but I was trying for to... For the record, pseudopigraphy is my, is my new pen name. <laughs> Sue. Sue. <laughs> like, boy named Sue. <laughs> well, you, I forgot your question, though. I feel bad. Let me... Well, I don't remember it either. You're too, <laughs> you're too high. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it's contact. Huh? It well, was but the Bible. It was about the Word it. of God, and if we can't, if oh, we can't yes. say okay. His name, how can He communicate ideas to yeah. us? If well, let me. 
how 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 can we understand what he's communicating? He also, by the way, um, mm-hmm. predominantly, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I believe that when this tradition was most likely to keep that name very sacred, right? Um, and I, I, some of the things I've heard in church over the years that I haven't fact checked, I still say just because it's fun to say. But I don't know if this is real. But as far as it was taught to me that. Uh, these scribes, when they would get to the name Yahweh in the Bible, they would wash their hands seven times too. So every time you get to Yahweh, you're washing your hands. So it's like, it's the whole idea is like what you're copying, this name of God, all this stuff is so sacred and so important. You need to treat it that way. Seven you know, times so, before or seven times after? I think it might have been both. I feel like it's both. Really? It's ri- something ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's what I heard. Again, this is just fundamentalist have speak, ever, right? So. How often have you washed your hands before you went pee? Because I do sometimes. <laughs> you wash your hands before you go pee? If my hands are dirty, yeah. I don't want to put sense? my dirty hands on my pecker. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Keep it clean. But, I mean... As far as you trying to, you know, we, we've also got to take into consideration that we don't know what it was like to live in 1000 BCE. Right. And these stories are probably trying to convey stuff that, you know, that we don't really understand. For instance, the the numbers in the Bible are all really weird. You know, it's like 40 days and 40 nights. The flood lasted 40 days. Jesus was out. These probably more sim- symbolic than they are literal. Do you think... That maybe a day was a year or something. I mean, I don't know because here's here's some calendar. weird shit. Like, okay, the Earth was created in seven days, like in a well, week, there's... in a week. <laughs> well, and it's then... only six because he rested one, right? So... Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a work week. Right. We're yeah. so lazy for taking two days off. Um, <laughs> but. But then along, uh, but uh, Methuselah, how old's Methuselah? Um, 960 yeah. years. I feel like Greek mythology, isn't that like seven, 750 BC or something like that? I mean, yeah. come on, you know? Well, I mean, the Epic of Gilgamesh is possibly 1500 years older than the, But do you think that maybe, like, okay, a, you know, they were using different words? Like, okay, a season. Yeah. A season yeah. maybe represents a year yeah. in some of these. Well, there's uh, even there's even a verse in the Bible that says a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. And, you know, that's but, pretty psychedelic, dude. Yeah, there's a yeah, the Bible's incredibly psychedelic. But, you know, the problem with what I just did there um, is I took another book of the Bible and I used it to describe a book of the Bible that's like written in a completely different context to a completely different group of people at a completely different right. time and so you can kind of mix and match and cherry pick this thing to death kind of you know you can see so you sound like a pastor <laughs> <laughs> hey yo hey i mean i don't you know i don't know I, I, I don't even know where i stand on it anymore you know i definitely this podcast is like uh kind of helped me like uh I'm kind of like more agnostic, I guess I would say, than atheistic, like I kind of became. But, um, but I wouldn't call myself an atheist either. Yeah, you know, like I, I just don't know. I've done too many psychedelic drugs in my life to be atheist. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's fucking exactly it. And I mean, you know, I didn't do, I didn't smoke weed till I was 29, because I thought smoke of weed made you a loser. Um, Does. <laughs> if you're a natural born loser, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> biblical right there. <laughs> uh, did uh, I said I think I sent it to you. Did you read that unclassified document ab- ab- uh, about simulation theory? About like astral. And that was with just projection, right? Like yeah. Everything's an energy field. Yes. I like it. I mean, it seems to fit, right? Like, uh, I mean, when you do psychedelic drugs, you can see it. Mm-hmm. You can. Mm-hmm. You just can. Yeah. 
well, under cer- like, certain circumstances, you can fucking see it. What what was it? What got you there? Like mushrooms, acid? What was the substance? Yes. That, both. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Hey, Big. Buddy. <laughs> Hi, friend. Uh, gray. Who's my? Uh, he's friend? got more gray than last time. He looks like me. Who's the biggest dog? Who's the biggest <laughs> dog? Um. So, I don't know. You know. Well, yeah. Th- the fun part is, is like, you can see how even just dipping your toe into the subject of the Bible, there are so many different ways you can take it you can see how it can be really easily manipulated to control people and um i don't know if you saw that article where it was like the top 15 or maybe 18 christian facebook pages were all run by troll farms in like turkey or like (laughs) they're all i didn't even know they grew trolls (laughs) (laughs) yeah dude facebook deletes like a billion accounts a quarter or something that are fake wow like right yeah 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 so all the top christian sites on facebook have all been completely fake and it's like how do they know for sure do they know for sure because is it just an algorithm is there a is there a safety net so that real things don't get deleted have you not heard about like the what is the internet research agency out of like Russia like those crazy, yeah they have people that just make like, and you know I spend most of my time in the Bible so uh, I should try to find the articles and actually back this up but like right. they have people that like make memes and meme sites right and so they'll have like right. um, a Black Lives Matter Facebook page and they'll like build it up and do a lot of stuff and then they'll have like a pro Muslim facebook page and then they'll have like a gun facebook page and then they'll like plan an event where all three of those people are on different corners of a street on the same day (laughs) no yeah 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 and who is behind this do you think do they know do you do they are there people that are yeah i mean russia china like pretty much everywhere right but like I try, or, you know, I have some organizations excuse. outside of America who want to create chaos. Yeah. Well, it right. makes sense, right? Like, and here's the thing about Christians, unfortunately. Well, man, I, that's so People. rude when I generalize. Yeah. But like, you know, specifically, if you, if you, you want to do the will of God and you're like trying to follow Jesus in your life, anything that is going to be that talks about Jesus, you're going to kind of instantly already like anything that's pro Jesus, you're going to instantly already like. Right. And so people kind of just follow along with, with, uh, this un- man, see, I'm just being a dick. <laughs> There's no, not a place no, no, I can no, take no, it's this. It's true. <laughs> like, look, I mean, it's true. If I see a bumper sticker that says anything other than just Jesus or I love Jesus, I'm just like, fuck you. Like, that's bullshit. If I say, uh, you know, you see the, like, uh, Jesus, had, if Jesus was a gun owner, he'd still be alive. <laughs> you know, shit like this. Like, you see shit like this. You see shit like this, you know? And you're like, well, you know, maybe. Seems like we've missed the point somewhere. Yeah, somewhere yeah, totally. along the line. Like, no, people, like... people bend things to their will. Yes, and the Bible's really easy to do that because you can quote one section of it that says right. you know, you're going to find what you want it to say. Of course. So there's that. But at the same time, you know, like I I tripped on mushrooms once with a buddy of mine. Um, and like it was the most spiritual experience I've ever had. And it literally like I, before this event, I was incredibly atheistic, you know. Um, and, and then you see the stars dance in emotion and hear a voice inside your head that says it loves you. And like, you know, we, no, it's, it's incredible. Like, I, I remember, I, I mean, I started doing acid in the eighth grade. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember being outside under the stars and looking at the stars and, and, and realizing how s- small we were. Yeah. And then holding my hand up, and you know your your spatial 
per, awareness. Per, yeah, awareness and perception is t- changed. And I was staring at my hand, and I wasn't seeing the lines in my hand. I was almost seeing constellations. And then I mm. start, and then I could see the the blood going through my hand. Yes. I could see the the muscles in my hand. Then I I could wow. see like the molecules of my hand. And I looked at the sky again, and I was like, "We're tiny." And I looked at my hand, and then I could see the you know atoms. And I was like, "We're huge." And I was like, <laughs> "It goes." And I just thought it, and I realized at that moment it goes infinitely in both directions. Yeah, and we are yeah. just uh, here. We are just a part of everything. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Don't. Be- <laughs> Bill and Ted got it right. It's really interesting. Yeah. You know. Be excellent to each other. And, uh, you know, don't don't shoot birds with your BB gun anymore. No. It's that simple. Yeah, it can be. Well, and, you know, I, I, have a, I have hope, like, especially starting the podcast, because as negative as it has been, obviously, um, there's actually a lot of positivity. I get a lot of messages from people that kind of grew up like me, you know. And um, I'm hoping by opening discourse about all this stuff that maybe we can bring some help to people with these religious issues. Because I, like, I know you have trauma because of your experience, mm-hmm. you know. And it, and I, I don't think that it is like trauma in the sort of traditional sense. It's almost like PTSD, right? It's like... Yeah. Uh, it's like coming out of a situation and having all these realizations like, wait a minute, that was bullshit. <laughs> but do you, like, this has got to be incredibly therapeutic to you. Yeah. This, it's insane. Yeah. You, I know that you and no, and nobody who listens to you tell your story on the podcast, whatever fault you for, uh, for being angry, but I don't think you're as angry as you used to be. And no. I see you on a really beautiful path to uh, just sort of getting past the bad parts of your experiencing, the, no. the bad parts of your experience and, uh, and moving forward with it and, and accepting those things as even, you know, even when you recognize the bad parts, it's almost like, what are you going to, are you pissed at a, are you pissed at a stoplight for turning red when you wished that it was just yellow for a little while longer? It's yeah. just a it's a thing that's doing its job and people think people think they're doing a job, you know. Yeah. Well, and that was for me the same thing, but for my life the the path to hell was paved with good intentions. You Still know? is, and buddy. <laughs> yeah, and that's <laughs> So it's like you know, the more I bump into people and realize they have little to no experience with reading or understanding this book and that I've spent like every day of my life trying to figure out what the fuck it's saying. I was like, maybe it's time, you know, yeah, it's been a very healing is, is cliche. And you know, I don't have any fucking pillows with words on them on my bed or anything right. like that, you know, but I mean, you know what you're getting for your is. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Eat, pray, love. <laughs> 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 Eat, yeah, you know, no, it's going to say smoke, pray, snack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, and with the immortality key, like w- that book is mind blowing. I'm really enjoying M- it. Yeah, have you how you're not that far through it, you said, right? I mean, I'm uh I'm into Turkey where they're talking about the basically the history of beer. And how yeah. it migrated out out of Turkey, they believe. Mm-hmm. How fermentation, like the earliest chemists were actually like, they were making beer and other, mm. you know, psycho altering drugs. Drinks. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's which crazy. Is great. Uh, which w- makes sense. And I mean... Yeah, maybe that's why church is so boring. 
You know, maybe that's why all of us long for these or have spiritual natures and tendencies. And, you know, maybe it's missing the key component of that, these psychedelic rituals. Right. How cool. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, do you believe in the power of prayer? Yes. I, I wouldn't call myself a Christian by any stretch of the means anymore, or what Christians call, you know. Um, but literally, like, there's some things about the story and, and, and faith that, like, stop me dead in my tracks and keep me from being an atheist. And prayer is literally one of them. The, probably the biggest, because that's fucking weird, right? Like, if people focus their energy enough, it seems like, they can make shit happen you know like, it works it seems to work although i know that my old church got together and when i joined vendetta red and prayed that i wouldn't <laughs> uh, <laughs> <and> so, <laughs> well so sometimes it doesn't work yeah but, uh, you know what maybe it did work because <laughs> that band is not active it's not a. No, I think I'm just still saying, there. maybe it worked. <laughs> I love that band. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, crazy experience of my life. Yeah. I I feel like it was important to ask you that question in in light of the the other things that you've said. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. I I you know. Who doesn't need more help on this path through life? And like we were saying at the beginning, if you find community in a church or you find something that's working for you, hot yoga, some, you know, right. I've got no problem with people being into it and talking about it and discussing it. Um, I, I just, maybe we can foster more open conversations that are built on facts and details. And, you know, we can bring in, all of the information now we have from these texts. There's been people studying the Bible for a long time now, right? Like, like we know a lot more about it than we used to. Um, construction, stories that were added, stories that were changed, you know. Here's and something so, I've never considered. Mm -hmm. The New Testament has been edited and sort of like there's there are many versions right yeah there's lots what of about things, yeah. the old testament how many times has it been diced up and were there stories added to the old testament um yeah you remember the dead sea scrolls yeah those were yeah, those were all, mm -hmm. there was a bunch of old testament in there. that's uh, a whole bunch that's those were the stories that hit the uh editing floor um well so I'm, I'm more familiar with the New Testament and I, there's lots of great examples of that in there, but there has to be, um, there has to be with the Old Testament as well. So with the New Testament, there's a lot of things where like, we have a lot of manuscripts of these books. We have a lot of like scrolls of these books. And so because we still have them all, some of them contain stories, some of them don't, right? Like my favorite story, I think it's in Matthew. Jesus is like confronted with this woman who's naked. He's like at the, uh, on a shore, he's preaching to all these people and the Pharisees throw a woman who was caught in the act of adultery right in front of him. Have you ever heard this story? Yes. Okay. I like it yeah. though, well, go on. Well, oh yeah, and then, you know, so in, in this amazing event this guy named jesus who apparently is god of everything in the middle of giving this huge ted talk for what it would have been back then right you know this woman thrown down naked shamed in front of him while he starts drawing in the sand it's really weird it doesn't say what he was it just says he was drawing in the sand to me it like i always kind of took it like he was doing a ridiculous thing to take the attention away from this woman being shamed put the weirdness on him and then after drawing for a little bit he looks up and he says you who are without sin throw the first stone you know what if um, he was drawing like some runes like he was drawing some fucking symbols <laughs> some protective fucking spell 
I thought you were gonna like go like boobs. I thought you were gonna go like <laughs> <laughs> pen fifteen on me right there. You know? No. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, well, the, I'm telling this story because that is not in the original transcripts. So that story in the Bible was not in the original copies we have of the Bible. So we we have a bunch of stories that get added on. That's one the of the amendments. That it's a pretty good one, right? I used to use it a lot. Great um, story. I, I even have a coffee mug that has a section of Hebrews. Um, and, uh, so, you know, the scribes that would copy the Bible, um, sometimes they write notes to each other in the margin, like on the, in the side, you know? And so there's this word and I, I can't remember which one it is right now, but it gets changed. And then the scribe is copying it and he writes a note to the previous scribe and he says, fool and knave, leave the original <laughs> reading alone. How many times does the word like, how many times does the word schmuck appear in the Old Testament? Not once. Not once. Not once, no. Um <laughs> uh, what do you think Jesus was doing between the age of twelve and thirty? Oh man. Well, so like have you ever read that book Zealot? Have you heard of that book? No, but I did just oh, get sorry. turned on to a movie called Jesus in India and it's, oh, it's streaming that's... on, it's streaming on Amazon and I'm going to watch it. And I'm pretty sure, isn't that Jesus's twin brother? Mm, uh, I don't know about Jesus's twin brother from the Bible, my friend. Uh, it's watch your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the gospel or St. Thomas who took the gospel to India, supposedly, uh, was no, Jesus' no, 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 no. twin this, brother. This is like, this is a story about the possibility that that's what Jesus was doing before he came back and became the Jesus that we know. Okay. They're saying there's evidence to support that he, he visited Tibet and India and like it's Santa fucking... Claus, though, because how could he walk there in all this time? Caravan. I don't know. Uh, but here's the thing. It's crazy. The book that I sent you and Jeff yeah, is, yeah, a, yeah. is a comedic story about that. And I oh, was asking weird. my I was asking my friend if he'd ever read it. And I'm I'm always kind of sensitive about sharing that kind of stuff with him because he's has a he's a nearly has a PhD in theology religious studies Sweet. and you know he has a regular religious practice he mm -hmm. teaches sunday school but he's a he's like a he's funny right. rock and roll guy and yeah <laughs> and he's like and i was like i i don't i i hope that none of this is offensive like i they no intention of that and he's like no no yeah. no 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 he's like check check this book out actually i have an extra copy i'll send it to you it's the <sighs> It's like the lost books of the Bible, and it's mm -hmm. there's there are a bunch of stories that include what Jesus was doing, uh, yeah, yeah, it, during mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, the why apocryphal you, books. Why do you suppose those stories didn't make the cut? Are they boring, or I'm, do well, they support the borrowing, the appropriation of other cultural and spiritual practice? I think it has to do with how the Bible gets put together by this guy named Constantine. Um, so I don't know if this story, this is like the story, I, I, um, but I don't know if there's any evidence to it. This guy, Roman emperor, before he becomes the emperor, was on a, a battlefield. And the night before this huge battle, he was most likely not going to win. He was really stressed. He has a dream. Um, in it, a cross appears before him, and the dream says, conquer by this. He goes out, wins the battle, he comes back, and he becomes like, you know, Christ, the first Christian emperor. And he starts being like, there's all these books, you know, there's, there's just tons of letters that are being written about Christ that are just being passed around everywhere. And like, how do we know which ones are right? How do we know which ones are correct, right? So they start trying to figure out which ones. That's where all that comes about. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> figuring out. It's just and, like, all and, right. 
and it's a Roman emperor. Let's do it, right? We're not you know? massaging so this. Like, let's, let's bust out the hammers. Yeah, it's like, I mean, not you can't really give it Joe Biden, but it'd be like you know a political figure, like right. picking all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now there's books like the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. That's not included. The Gospel of Thomas, which is the one with India, I believe you're talking about. The Gospel of um, um, Enoch is really good, and that gives a guided tour of hell, I'm pretty sure. Guided um, tour. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of other books from... Oh, you cut out. What? Here, now we are... Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Please uh, ensure that your headsets are on securely. Uh, the waters of the River Styx are known to be quite choppy. And stocked full <laughs> of ferocious hellfire beasts. <laughs> Although the surface of the hot tub appears calm. <laughs> <laughs> just below is a frenzy of biblical activities. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, like this faith is a lot deeper than than we've all been sold. And this person... Jesus Christ definitely could have been trying to pass down a different religion through the sacrament, through this, um, the breaking, you know, this is my body, yeah. my blood, you know, like, and, um, you know, even Jesus, the, like James, the Jesus brother, uh, Jesus brother, he, he, he lived his whole life as a Christian. Uh, he wrote a book in the Bible. It's my favorite one. Um, and, you know, he lived in sackcloth and just gave and gave and gave and gave. And when he died, he's such a good guy. It caused a revolution, right? So, like, even really? his own brother. Yeah. Mm hmm. Wow. Mm hmm. And actually, he hated the Apostle Paul, which is a, not talked about widely. He did? Yeah, they had beef. They had a lot of beef. Really? Well, again, like East so Jerusalem, after... West Jerusalem beef? Totally. <laughs> Totally. Exactly. Why? Uh, I mean, then he didn't live as a Christian, right? The Apostle Paul we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, and this would probably get me in hot water, but I think the Apostle Paul sucks. I think he's stupid. Um, what about James? If he hated Paul. James was fucking awesome. But He's if he had hate in his heart, he wasn't living as a Christian. Or maybe he was, what he was trying to say is that this person is preaching a different version of the gospel, of my brother, of, of God. He's not preaching the correct. Right. Like, you know, and James, as my favorite verse, says true Christianity is to give to the fatherless and the widowed and to keep oneself unstained from the world. It's like, that was his entire deal. It's like, do you need help? Here you go give, 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 give. We can all help each other out here, you know? And so, um, um, you know, that, that's the brother. And that guy believed, you know, right. um, many of the apostles were martyred for their faith. You know, uh, there's a rumor that the apostle Paul was crucified upside down. It definitely could be true, but it won't by be James that. even. <laughs> but you know what i'm saying is that these people that experienced this man had like life altering life changing experiences they lived the rest of their life devoted to this cause so what happened you know and um man if you go on a psychedelic trip for the first time in your life you're gonna come back pretty changed you know and if if this I this like the carpenter. theory in the in the in the book that they're sort of mm -hmm. like heading toward. Mm -hmm. I can see where they're headed with yeah. the the um, immortality key, uh, yeah. and I'm really excited to get to get through that. And and I just feel like I am I'm going to be devouring books and movies and information. I, I got a couple for you. Yeah, I got a couple. God, you, this guy Reza Aslan. You should check out all of his books. Great. There's one called God and one called Zealot. Both really good. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, maybe we should just get together and, um, and somehow get you to do DMT. And then then you can go yeah, meet him. Sure. <laughs> you know, I'm also going, I like, I. it's not been the best time. And I've been traveling through a little, I've like traveled through a little bit of a, some darkness lately but 
Mm. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try meditating. Like I have I have an interest I I have an interest in exploring meditation, and it's gr- yeah it's great. Um, so I want to I want to see where that'll take me. Yeah, my yeah, friend who teaches Sunday school. Oh yeah. Same also one. practices transcendental meditation. What? I know. And he's, and he's religious. And I was, well, I I asked him. It's beautiful. How does that work? And he told me he learned it from another person in his in his church. And he's like, "There's nothing about it that conflicts with religion." Hmm. Which blew my mind. I was like, "That's incredible! I love that." It is. I, someone's at my door, real quick. I gotta go check this. Okay. I'll edit that little section out. Cool. Okay. Yeah, no. No worries. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we are two. We are two hours in right now. Jesus. I know. Wow. That's what we've well, talked about largely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, a, in a, my ADHD manner. Yeah. No, I it, this <laughs> this has been this has flown by and I've really enjoyed it and here's the thing is that you know, if if people want uh, I I just encourage people to go check out uh Let's Get High and Read the Bible. You do it with with our mutual lovely dear friend Jeff Redding. Yeah. Who Ha, you know, has his own experience with religion, which is not yeah. n- nearly as deep or as like, you know, his his parents didn't project that as on him as as hard as as yours did. Um, but he has his own experience and his own feelings about everything. But also, I love it's almost like a guided trip, like that you take him on. <laughs> he's he's got a lot of questions and and yeah. usually you have an answer you you've you've done a lot of reading in your life and it's yeah. i just i think it's i think it's great you know Thank what we you. haven't talked about at all what is the music that you're working on and i feel oh, like yeah. it would be it would be an absolute shame and so can you just talk a little bit before we yeah. go about the music that you are working on yeah, it's kind of crazy, actually. So how do I start this? Well, so, you know, I've always had a band. I've never not always been in a band, and I'm, I'm always like a side guy. You know, I'm a studio musician, guitar player, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Well, um, I met this girl <laughs> and fell in love, and, like, uh, I was sitting in an apartment, and I write songs all the time, like riffs, mostly choruses, you know, verses and choruses type things, and I got, like, I got like 680 half ideas on my phone, you know, just like kind of constantly do it. But I, I always like pair up with other people, you know, and I was always in other bands. So I was always like kind of working for those bands or like writing songs for those bands. Um, and I was sitting in the apartment and I was realizing that I wanted to get married to her. And I was like, I should write her a song like just me. <laughs> and so I was like, if I can write a decent song and sing it and record it, I had like a little four track, one of those task cams, you know, um, then I'm just going to start writing my own songs and do it myself. So that's what happened. I write the song, we get engaged, um, go through this. Is that how of, you proposed to her by playing her the song? Um, I had recorded on a four track and I gave her, it was Christmas time. So we were in a hotel in Dallas and I had like packed a Christmas tree uh, to propose to her because I got I, I had wrapped up all these presents for her, right. and one of them was like a, um, a tape player that had a speaker on it, you know, like a, one of those old tape deck recorders that also plays. Yeah. So that had the song on the tape in there, and then like a little music box that had the ring in it and stuff, and so my tree was tiny and this hotel had a huge tree. So like the first thing we did is went and stole a tree and brought it back to our hotel room. <laughs> <And> <laughs> like, <laughs> that I, I did it that way. But, um, shortly after we get engaged, we, I had, I came back up to Washington to uh, 
go through some legal stuff and it was a long time and I come back and my, my wife had learned a song for me on ukulele and I, I didn't even really know she could sing that well. And so right before the pandemic, we were like, dude, let's just start a band. So we've, we've written about 32 songs now. Um, we're whittling it down, just kind of throwing all the spaghetti at the wall. It's got like all these rock songs in it. It's got all these like Portishead type songs in it. And we're just kind of whittling away, seeing which ones we're going to put out. We call it 1111, mm -hmm. uh, LVN, LVN. We're really bad at social media and all that shit. But like every night we just sit in our apartment and write songs and sing and like it's it's really starting to shape up we're hope, hopefully going to get out on the road this next year um start playing a bunch of shows but um i should have an album done in early early january I'm trying to wrap it up at the end of this month like in a month yeah i, I mean it's all it's all right here behind me uh there's there's about 30 sheets of paper with lyrics on it and <laughs> what's done is it's all me you know I'm, I'm playing bass guitar drums um recording it all myself too and i have a little vocal booth and isovox in here and I, yeah you know i couldn't sing before any of this shit so i've just been like in our apartments and looping the songs like 700 times in a row learning just sing them just yeah like you know i love music it's like the coolest fucking thing in the world to me and like i've always been in Luckily, like I've, I've been able to be in some really cool bands, I think, you know, and bands I really liked. And, you know, so it's like a gang thing, you know, you're all in it together. You know? Yeah. And um, that's hard to manage as you get older. People have lives and, you know, it's hard to, to keep pushing that thing. And I, I just don't, you know, I was, I was done having anyone else in, in the way of my favorite thing, you know. So it's right. like, bitch, just teach yourself to sing and get out there. You know? uh -huh. So, yeah, it's. I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it. It's um, it's been fun. As well. uh, me too. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. I can't <laughs> wait. I cannot yeah. wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll be sending you some of those demos pretty soon too. Awesome. It's just all over the map. It might it might end up being like two or three bands. There's like country songs. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have to I, be that's it's it's weird getting older in this environment right it's like why do anything anymore I'm, i just want to write songs play songs here's it's the thing my favorite fucking thing. you can make up your own story about why after the fact <laughs> i mean this is yeah. a completely original idea but you can come up with an origin story of why 11 11 covers many genres and it can be an <laughs> and it can be an afterthought yeah yeah can you I, think of anyone who's ever done that before <laughs> <laughs> just kidding no one's ever done it yeah well to me it's always about the music anyway i don't know I know that sounds corny or whatever, but no, like, not at all. It's fucking all, music's awesome. I just want to sit and play music, make good music, play cool shows, you know? Um, so it's, it's, it's been really liberating for myself too, because like, you know, I like on Wednesday nights, we'll usually, uh, we'll, we'll like get together, me, uh, my wife and I, and then we'll be, we'll be like, okay, we have 30 minutes each to write a country song and we'll like separate to different rooms. <laughs> and we'll like, That's awesome. like have to come together. Yeah. She, she usually does better than me, unfortunately. Uh, uh, it's great to have, uh, I would say that is a fortunate, <laughs> not unfortunate, <laughs> like great. Yeah. yeah. What a great motivator yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. And She's how awesome really for her. Yeah, well, and, you know, I touring is like, you know, before I came down here, I was doing 300 shows a year, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for eight years in a row, right. you know, and like, uh, you know, yeah, you, you, you work out some weekly gigs, you work, you got to get some artists that you work with all the time, and all of a sudden your schedule is really full, and then, you know, you don't even have time to think when you're playing that many shows you're just driving and playing and driving flying and playing riding and playing you know it's like it's just go 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 and you kind of forget you know at least i did it's like you know man i really like like 
loud guitars and I really like like big amps and I really like like you know you don't get a engaging it with that like 14 year old bedroom obsession thing you had you know it's like you got to show up and look cool and then play that one part in the song you know it's like what is your shirt oh that's Middleton's place the cut by you know Shane oh oh, yeah 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 I just had this vision hair salon I just had this vision. You know uh, TCB like like this? Taking care of business? Yeah. With yeah, the yeah. lightning? What yeah, if yeah. it said RTB, like read the Bible? <laughs> because, because of uh, the... the, the Elviski? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Read the Bible. That's pretty. I think that might just be our slogan too. Like, it's pretty said, good. Let's get high and read the Bible. Like the, the, the yeah. I think that that's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Leif, I yeah. love you. I'm really. Ha- I like listening listening to you guys talk. Uh, it makes me, you know, it makes me feel like uh, like I'm with you guys because yeah, I'm talk <laughs> like I'm talking to the stereo as I listen or on my headphones. I'm just like talking out loud at work. People think I'm crazy. And <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you have an open invitation. You can come on whenever you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can even just be the third. You can come on whenever you want. <laughs> well, thank you. Careful. Yeah. Careful with the invitations. <laughs> yeah, Redding's punching the radio. Right I'm not. Now. I'm not well known <laughs> for turning invitations down. Uh, um, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk my dogs and get myself some dinner, and Word. then get to planning this birthday party. That's a good idea. I'm gonna go pick That's up my son. Idea. But dude, yeah, this was great. Thank you. Thank you for having me in my ADHD. Life, I love here. you so much, <laughs> and I'm so happy that so this much. finally came. Uh, came to happen. Yeah, I'm fine. Dude. I'm happy that this came to pass. Yeah, it was great. Thanks, man. We begat a podcast. <laughs> we begat it. <laughs> we began it, then we begat it. Praise his name. <laughs> uh, hey, can you? I think this is great. I think, do you have any still images of you either as rollerblading Jesus or. As oh yeah or oh do you have some still images? I have gifts. Im- I have can you send me images. some still images that I can edit and make some promo posts with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful. Um, do you want any guitar ones or sure? Like send this one? send me some some high res photos that I can I'm I can mess with. Res, well, that's all. I'll do. Uh, you know what? I'll do. See what I can do. Okay. Okay. I'll do. Yeah. I'll do my best. Okay, cool. That's all we can do, right? That's all we can do. All right, buddy. It's our best. All right, buddy. I love you. Keep killing it. You're doing great, man. I love the podcast. (laughs) Thanks. I can't wait for the record. Thanks, man. Yeah. Putting a lot of time into it all. Can't wait to come out and play the songs for you. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) All right. I'll talk to you soon. Does it end totally? Uh, How do we do that? I think this is how I stop the recording.